Okay. Um, hopefully this doesn't lag. Um. Touching. Like a handshake. To begin with, yes. What is the point of touching my hand? I find it an offensive intrusion. There were many nuances that Flemeth could never tell me of. When to look into another's eyes. How to eat at a table. How to bargain without offending. None of these things I knew. I still do not understand it all, truth be told. But then I gave up long ago any hope of doing so. When I returned to the wilds last, I swore to Flemeth that I had no intention of leaving again. Well, you can go back if you like. I have no qualm with the mission I have been set to. Flemeth was correct, like it or not. The Darkspawn are an enemy of all. Well, let's get on with it before the ground opens up and swallows us, yes? Yeah, I suppose so. Yes? Mm. So, um, life in the wilderness must have been very lonely. At times, perhaps. A world full of people and buildings and things was all very foreign to me. If I wished companionship, I ran with the wolves and flew with the birds. If I spoke, it was to the trees. Hmm. And did they speak back? Don't be foolish. <laughs> I recall the first time I crept beyond the edge of the wilds. I did so in animal form, remaining in the shadows and watching these strange townsfolk from afar. I happened upon a noblewoman by her carriage, adorned in sparkling garments the likes of which I had never before seen. I was dazzled. This, to me, seemed what true wealth and beauty must be. I snuck up behind her and stole a hand mirror from the carriage. It was encrusted in gold and crystalline gemstones, and I hugged it to my chest with delight as I sped back to the wilds. Hmm. What happened then? Flemeth was furious with me. I was a child and had not yet come into my full power, and I had risked discovery for the sake of a pretty bauble. To teach me a lesson, Flemeth took the mirror and smashed it upon the ground. I was heartbroken. Hmm. Well, Flemeth was right, no doubt. Beauty and love are fleeting and have no meaning. Survival has meaning. Power has meaning. Without those lessons, I would not be here today, as difficult as they might have been. They made you stronger, didn't they? They did indeed. To return to your original question, perhaps my time in the wilds was indeed lonely, but such was how it had to be. I find myself at times wondering what might have become of the girl with the beautiful golden mirror, but such fantasies have no place amidst reality. I suppose so. Yes? I'd like to ask you something. If you must. Have you been ever been hunted by the Chantry? <laughs> You are very cute to ask so many questions. And you are cute when you are evasive. Really? Perhaps we should be wrapped in ribbons and adorned with flowers. So cute are we too. <laughs> My mother has been hunted from time to time, yes. By Templar fools like Alistair, which should tell you how successful they generally were. Flemeth made a bit of a game of it, in fact. The Templars would come again, and she would look at me and smile and say that the fun was to begin once more. Hmm. Really had no trouble with them, didn't you? I am unsure. I was too young to understand, and perhaps it was bravado on Flemeth's part, or perhaps she was merely amused. I will never know. Flemeth would warn them once. It was a warning they inevitably failed to heed. And then the true game began. Often Flemeth would use me as bait. <laughs> a little girl to scream and run and lure the Templars deeper into the wilds and to their doom. Hmm. Surely more would have hollowed. Sometimes. Eventually. Thankfully, the wilds is a vast place. Once they found us, Flemeth would simply move us elsewhere and we would be lost within the forest once again. I did not understand the danger we faced until I was much older. 
I had never heard of apostates or maleficarum. <laughs> they got what they served. Perhaps they did. Still, I do not begrudge them doing what they believe is necessary. The Chantry sees any mages not leashed to the Circle of Magi as apostates. And apostates could become maleficarum, evil mages that resort to blood magic and become demon-enslaved abominations. It may even be true. Still, those of us who prefer freedom see no reason to submit. Huh. If I were a mage... I might think the same. Thank you for small favors, then, at the very least. Enough of this talk. Let us return to the task at hand. Hmm. I see. Yes? Like you ask if me you must. Then? Is Plymouth really what she seems to be? <laughs> well, that depends, does it not? What does she seem to be? Ooh. She might be some sort of powerful malefic arm. You mean, is she truly the Flemeth of legend and story? Tell me. How much do you know of the tale? The one that the Chastened still tell of my mother, to frighten them into obedience? Uh, I've read the Codex of it. I'm more interested in the truth, you know. I can relay what Flemeth once told me herself, and you can decide whether or not tis the truth, if you desire. Hmm. This sounds interesting. As the tale is sung by the bards. There was a time when Flemeth was young and beautiful. A fair lass in a land of barbarian men. The desire of any who saw her. Yes, I've heard that part. The tales say that Flemeth fell in love with Osin the Bard, and fled the castle of her husband, the dread Lord Conobar, and that he swore vengeance for her infidelity. In truth. My mother claims that t'was Osen who was her husband, and Conobar the jealous lord, who looked on from afar. Lord Conobar approached young Osen and offered him wealth and power in exchange for his lovely wife. And Osen agreed. Plymouth must have been angry. The life of a bard is a poor one, and love fades in the wake of hunger. It was Flemeth who suggested the arrangement. All would have been well had Lord Conobar kept his end of the bargain. But he was a foul man who bargained with coin he did not possess. Osen was led off to a field and slain, left for dead. Flemeth spoke to the spirits and learned of the deed, and swore revenge. Hmm. So, she truly loved Osen then? That was not the point. Conobar had no honor, so she would not have him. Flemeth begged the spirits to aid her, and t'was they who slew Conobar. The demon the legend tells of came later. Lord Conobar's allies chased Flemeth, you see. Chased her to the wilds, and there she hid. There she found the demon, and he made her strong. The legends all speak of the great hero Cormac, he who defeated Flemeth and her great army when she invaded the Lowlands centuries later. All lies. Hmm. Which... She never invaded? Or... He... Oh, it's lagging again. And Burgess. hopefully it's not lagging again. Alright. Which... Which one? She never invaded or he never defeated her? The truth of the matter is that there was never an invasion. As Flemeth tells it, the Chastened never raised an army under her banner and she never fought with any warrior named Cormac. Cormac led a brutal civil war against his own people and later claimed it was to vanquish evil that had taken root amongst the Lords. Thus, he was hailed a hero. Flemeth was only attached to the legend much later. Perhaps it was due to the great war with the Chastened that eventually came, but Mother claims not to know how it began. Hmm. How is it that Flemeth had survived for so long? The demon within her has transformed her into... something else. An abomination, perhaps, some would say. I know not. I only know my mother is clever, and she is part of the wilds as it is part of her. But she is no immortal. She bleeds. A blade in her heart would kill her like any other. 
were it lucky enough to find her. Hmm. The legend tells of Flymouth having many daughters. You ask if I have sisters? I have asked of this myself. The stories tell of many witches of the wilds, after all, not just the one. And these tales existed long before I did. Flemeth refuses to speak of other daughters, if they existed. So, should I believe I am her first? I doubt that too. Hmm. Aren't abominations usually insane horrors? How often is this usually? Always? If not always, then when is it not true? There are more things in this world and the next than you or I could ever hope to understand. What Flemeth became is a mystery. I suspect even to her. Do you believe her version? I do not believe everything that Flemeth claims. Oft it seems her bitterness has colored her memories. But on the whole, yes, I believe this tale, if not all. Sounds like an interesting story. Thanks! Flemeth tells it with far more embellishment than I, but you are welcome. Dare I ask of your own mother? Few are abominations of legend, tis true, but I find myself curious nevertheless. There's... My mother died recently, in fact. Ah, then you have my sympathies for what it is worth. Which is very little, I am certain. It matters not. Let us move on. Yeah, I suppose so. Yes? So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, are you really Flemeth's daughter? I assume you were actually asking whether Flemeth herself gave birth to me. Truly? I do not know. I once asked Flemeth that very question, and she merely laughed at me. Tis not inconceivable that she could capture a chastened man, or perhaps change to a more attractive form to attract him willingly. I find it more difficult to imagine her with child. Hmm. She was not always as old as she is now, was she? As a matter of fact, I remember her being younger once. She had black hair, much like my own, long and lustrous. But how could that be if she is centuries old? Has she become wizened only recently? Or are the tales of her legend only that and nothing more? I do know the tales of Flemeth having many daughters, even though I have never met another. And Flemeth has always treated me as her blood. She doesn't seem very motherly, you know. Or... Yeah. Must one be a doting and simpering moron to be considered a suitable mother? Flemeth <laughs> taught me everything I needed to learn. How to survive, the meaning of power, the truth of men. If other mothers do not teach these things, then I believe them the lesser. Hmm. I suppose that's true. You suppose it's true? Tis true. Take yourself. You do not honestly desire such things from me, do you? Tis better to be free of such cloying and cluttering delusions as love. What if I did want that? Then more the fool you, I think. I tire of this discussion. Let us move on, shall we? Well, I suppose that's a pig. But oh well. Yes? Huh. If you must. You teach I speech. cannot teach you, no. But any other mages that cared to learn, yes, I could do that. Send whoever you wish my way, and I shall teach them what I can in the camp, provided they possess the will to even make the attempt. I suppose so. Yes? I'd like to discuss something personal. We are hardly alone, so privacy is not an option. It is your question, however. Ask what you will. So... What do I have to do to get on your good side? Let us assume that this imaginary good side exists. What exactly would be the benefit for you to get on it? Oh, 
little subtle for a smile, actually. Oh, do I not smile enough to suit you? How very negligent. Let me see. I would expect favor to come with a price. Perhaps you would be willing to pay a compliment. Is that too much? Hmm? Mm. You are brilliant and amazing. I suppose stating the obvious will have to do. Very well, then. You are on my good side. Best watch your step that you don't fall off. <laughs> I suppose so. Yes? Uh, we are personal. hardly alone, so privacy is not an option. It is your question, however. Ask what you will. Um, you are heartless, true. You know that. Yes, yes. I shall take that as a compliment, whether intended or not. Is there more? It's a clumsy start, but we can move on to the flirting if you like. Hmm. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Let us continue on then while I think of something to rhyme. Huh. All right. Well. Hmm. Guess I'll go for it for now. So what's up? Who there? If you're looking for safe shelter, I'll warn you, there's none to be found. Move on if you can. Lothering's lost. I was just looking for some news, actually. You might find that, though it's probably just frightened gossip. We've had refugees streaming from the south for the last two days. The Chantry and Tavern are full to bursting. There simply isn't enough food to go around, and we Templars can barely keep order. You'd be better off elsewhere, my friend. Thanks for the warning. Best of luck wherever you might go. Yeah. Well, refugees, refugees, refugees. Back off. I have the right to charge what I wish. You profit from their misfortune. I should have the Templars give away everything in your carts. You wouldn't dare. Any of you step too close to my goods and I'll... It's so nice to see everyone working together in a crisis. Warms the heart. Oh, you there. You look able. Would you care to make a tiny profit helping a beleaguered businessman? Hmm. Is your profiteering ruffling some feathers? You could say that, yes. The nerve of these people. He is charging outlandish prices for things people desperately need. Their blood is filling his pockets. His only survival of the fittest. All of these Cretans would do the same in his shoes, given the chance. I have limited supplies. The people decide what those supplies are worth to them. You bought most of your wares from these very people last week. Now they flee for their lives, and you want to talk business? Look, stranger, I have a hundred silvers if you drive this rabble off, starting with that priest. I'm an honest merchant, nothing more. <laughs> Can you beat that off, our sister? You want me to bid against him? We don't have that kind of coin. Mm. What do I do if I get your help? We have nothing to offer but our gratitude. Hmm. I suppose it's not right to run off desperate folks. Would it help these folks if they could buy no goods at all? They spend their very last coin because they are desperate, and this man preys upon them as surely as the bandits outside the city. Ah, I'm not arguing anymore. Drive off this woman and get your hundred silvers. Otherwise, I'm taking my wagon and leaving. Hmm. I think you can compromise and still make a profit, you know? Perhaps. If that woman agrees, I'm allowed to charge something. Do what you must. So long as the prices do not beggar the needy. Fine, fine, done. And since you don't look too needy, normal prices for you. So, we have come to solve every squabble in the village personally. Hmm? My, but the Darkspawn will be impressed. <laughs> Thank you for your generous assistance. May the Maker watch over your path. Yeah. Man, I'm lagging a bit. But hey, I'll be right back. <laughs>